Okay, so this is going to show how to use Futile, my Unity 2D engine, to get stuff running on the screen in Unity. Um, so go into Unity, open up a new project, uh, choose wherever you want to put it, and give it a name, and create a new project. Um, okay, so now that we have a new project created, we're going to go to GitHub and go to... Um, you can either download the whole thing as a zip, it's at uh, github.com slash matrix slash futile, or just go to the Unity package and download it as a raw file. And then you can click on that and import it into Unity and all um, everything futile needs will now be inside Unity. Okay, so now we're gonna prepare some uh, some assets. So I have I have this folder here with, uh, with some images in it and I'm gonna create a bitmap font to use as well. So I don't know, I'll choose Arial Black. Now this, this program I have here is called Glyph Designer and it's a really great program for creating bitmap font atlases, uh, but it's a paid program. There are free alternatives though that work fairly well, uh, but this is probably the best program for it. So I'm gonna create this, this crazy bitmap font image and uh, I'm gonna put it in this images folder and save it as, I guess, just as Arial. And, uh, and so you'll see this, this Arial image is now in this folder. Then I'm going to open Texture Packer, which is a program that takes a whole bunch of images and packs them into a single large Atlas image. Uh, and, and this also has a free and paid version. Um, and so I'm going to choose my data format as Unity 3D. And then my data file, I'm going to go into Unity. Uh, somehow I'm already in the right place, but I'm going to go into the Unity folder, Assets, Resources, and create a new folder called Atlases. And then in that atlases folder, I'm going to make something called banana. And, uh, and so I'm going to save that and hit publish. And, uh, and then I'm going to grab this font file, this .fnt file, and go into unity slash assets slash resources slash atlases and paste it there as well. Uh, but I'm going to rename it to .txt as a text file because unity can only read text files that have a .txt extension. So if we go in here into Unity, now we can see that in our resources folder, there's this atlases folder and inside atlases, there is this banana atlas that we created. And there is this Arial text file that, that describes um, that text atlas. And there's this banana text file that's actually a JSON file that describes how each of the images have been packed into that atlas. So let's get stuff showing up on the screen. So first I'll save this, this current untitled scene as banana. And, uh, and so now we have this banana scene that we're in and I'm going to actually delete the main camera and I'm going to create an empty game object. I'm going to place it at 000. And then I am going to go into plugins slash futile and grab the futile script and drag it onto this game object. And just for fun, I'm going to name this game object futile so we know exactly what it is. Um, so now we have futile on there, but if we run this, we'll see that nothing actually is showing up on screen because we don't have any game logic in there yet. So I'm going to create a new folder called scripts and I'm going to create a script uh, let's say C sharp script and we're going to call this banana game and then I'm going to go into this banana game script we'll wait for uh, for mono develop to open I'm going to go in this banana game script and uh, and so we'll start to to actually initialize futile so first thing we need to do is create a futile params object um, So this, this basically gives Unity a bunch of information, or sorry, not Unity, but gives Futile a bunch of information about how we want to initialize um, Futile with what settings. So this, this first set of Booleans I'm giving it here describe what orientations we want to support. Um, this add resolution level thing is actually really interesting. Uh, I'm not really going to go into the, in this video, but it will allow you to, uh, to essentially determine what assets are loaded based on what resolution the screen is. And so it makes it really easy to support retina displays and, uh, and stuff like that and, and working in points instead of pixels so that the units you're working in actually can represent multiple pixels on the screen. Um, I'm gonna set the, uh, the origin to 0 0.5, 0 0.5, which means it's halfway through X and halfway through Y. Uh, which means it's, the origin is going to be at the center of the screen. And then I'm going to take futile and actually initialize it with this, this params object. Um, okay, so 
now we've we've given futile the the parameters it needs to be initialized and now we need to actually add our atlas to it so we can do futile atlas manager um load atlas and our atlas was stored in atlases slash banana so this was this is our folder here uh, everything you load externally in unity is always in the resources folder so in resources so we have atlases slash banana is the name of our our Atlas. So I'm going to load that there. And then I'm also going to load futile atlas manager dot load font. And the font we have, uh, we'll just call it Arial, um, the element name. So this is the actual name of the image in the atlas, which was also Arial.png. And then uh, finally, the, the path to the config for it, which is atlases slash Arial. So now we have everything we need set up. Now we just have to actually add something to the stage. So all you do to do that, let's uh, let's do a really quick example here. Um, banana equals new f sprite banana dot png. This is just one of the elements in our atlas, and then I can just say uh, futile dot stage add child banana. And uh, now we need to go back to Unity, and you'll see in Unity uh, there's one more thing we have to do, and, and that is just take our game object here and also drag this banana game script on it. So it has the futile script and banana game on it. And if we run this, we'll see a banana showing up on the screen. Now it looks kind of wonky because we're not in the right resolution. So I'm going to go to file, build settings, set it to just PC Mac standalone, and set the size to 480 by 320. If you have the iOS version of, of Unity, then you can use that instead. But I'm just going to set it to an iPhone resolution really quickly. And, uh, and so that's cool. And then I'm going to go into game and in the top left here, I'm going to set it to 480 by 320. So it always opens in that size. So now if I run this, it's 480 by 320. The banana is drawn at the correct size. So now we can have a bit more fun. Um, we can do things like let's, let's create it as a private variable instead. So, uh, F sprite banana, and then I can make this banana that instead. And then on the update, I can do, uh, I don't know, banana.rotation plus equals five, let's say. And, and now if I run this again in Unity, you'll see that the banana is rotating. Uh, or I can, I can do a lot of interesting things. I can uh, go to the code and I can set, I don't know, let's say banana, the anchor X, the actual anchor position on the sprite. I can set it to the far left side of the sprite. So now when we, we spin this banana, it's actually spinning around the left edge of it. Or I can uh, I can set the banana alpha to 0 0.5, so it's semi-transparent. And I can set the, the scale x to 10, so it's scaled really far in the x dimension. And so now we have this crazy stretched out banana. And now all of this is running at 60 frames a second. Um, in the video you're actually watching of the screencast, it, it might not look that fast, but it, it, it actually runs quite well. And Unity itself, uh, and actually on iOS devices and all that stuff. Um, okay, and finally, that that text label we made, let's let's create that. So we we do a um, f label. Um, I don't know. Test label equals new f label. Our font name is Arial, and the text we want is Hello World. And then we will just simply futile dot stage. Uh, add child test label. And so, yeah, let's see what happens. So there we go. We have our bitmap text showing up in the center of the screen, looking disgustingly ugly, but it does work. And we can actually do stuff. Uh, one, one last demo, I guess. We'll make a private F container, which is an object that can hold other objects. I'll call it holder. Um, I will make a, uh, let's see. So holder equals new F container. Um, I will add it as a child of the stage. So there we go. And then I will actually add these two things as children of holder instead. And I will actually spin, um, I will spin holder instead of spinning the objects. So now you can see the banana and the text are both children of that object and I can I can do things like um, I don't know holder dot scale let's just scale let's say times equals 0 0.99 and now it's going to shrink off into oblivion with both of our objects on top of it so that's about it that's a quick demo of how futile works and how to get some basic stuff showing up on on the screen 
Um, there's a lot of extra, more powerful things you can do with it. Uh, you can you can set blend modes and things like that. Uh, but for now, this is a good kind of demonstration of how it works. And so check it out on github.com slash mattrix slash futile. And, uh, and I'm also on Twitter at twitter.com slash mattrix. So let me know what you think of it. Thanks. See ya.